Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. This is Baz, and in this series we're going to be going over the other runtime actions provided in the engine. There's about three pages worth of them, and so we're going to go be going through each one of them and seeing exactly what they want and exactly what they do. And while we're going to be doing that in this scene here with a movable player object in a lab coat, he's going to be like our guinea pig, little test subject. So let's talk about other runtime actions that are located right here on the right hand side of a state and each state has their own. You can minimize them or maximize them and you can think of runtime actions as a list, a list that the computer will run before it will move on to the next state. Now that's not always true because you might have a transition that pulls it to the next state before the runtime actions are able to all complete but generally that's a good way to think of it. It's the list that it will run before it goes to the next state. So how you add a runtime action is just clicking on this plus here, and we are going to set this one. Click on this box and you'll get a check mark. I'm gonna, I want the player to face right basically is what I'm doing. We'll go into this more in depth on another video, but just to get this on here and show exactly how the computer runs. Right now our idle face is left by default. So I wanted it to face right, and if we play test that, you will see the computer changed our player to face right. So with that said, there's a couple things that we can do with this runtime action once we have it in there. We can first off control paste, or control copy then paste, and you can get it. You can click on the minus and get rid of it. Let's say we went to another state, you can copy paste it right there as well. You can also control Z and get rid of it. And you can also add multiples at the same time. So you could go through a list of like four and then click OK and they add. You can then click shift click and it will grab that group or you can click and then control click and grab selected few. So with that said, now we can go and see what these two icons do. So you have this stop icon, which it stands for skip. Basically, you're saying, we're not gonna run this runtime action, we're just gonna skip over it for now. And this can be used for bug testing, or for if you set up a thing that you don't wanna set up again, but you don't know if you're gonna need it or not, you can now just skip it and leave it and it will not run in the game at all, even your built games it will not run in. So since I have it selected right now, you can tell it's, it's uh, bolded, the player will not turn right now, it'll just be in its normal state. So if we click play test, that's what happened. It skipped over that runtime action. So I'm gonna click that back off so that it does work. And then we're gonna click on this object right here and it's got a camera. And what this is standing for is that this object can now be changeable in the scene. And by scene, it means the scene tab over here. So you're giving the scene access to change this individual object. And what's really nice about this is say we go over to the scenes right here uh, and we have the object selected that we're using right now. Over here, you can see that in the runtime action changeable, you in the idle state you now have one runtime action that you can change for this object specifically for instance this one's facing right it wants this one to face right if we added another object in here again we get access to it in the editor and let's just say we want to face this one down so we'll face this one down now this one is has the 180 down. This object, however, retains the 90, the original. So if we click play, this object faces down, but this object faces right. So this runtime action changeable is going to be, is very powerful. And this is how you get the specific things for each general object on the scene, because this object just means every object. But now when you're in the scene, now when you have the scene changeable clicked on, now you can make 
unique objects out of that one object. So really powerful way of setting up your objects and then making them specific to that scene. With that said, that is the basics of the runtime actions and we will get started with the first one which we'll just have set move direction and move in the next video.